one of the backgrounds for us doing a kind of special issue on Apocalypse is that many people, you know, again, as people have repeatedly throughout history, (laughs) feel that, you know, things are ending in a certain way. You have climate change, you have widespread um, reluctance uh, that you can see in surveys uh, for people to have kids. You have the war in Ukraine right now, which um, kind of re-ups a whole bunch of issues that people had thought put to bed uh, from the Cold War, including, you know, the pros- the real prospect of nuclear war. Uh, and on a more conservative front, you have people seeing the kind of demise of a, a, a Christian-inflected society reflected both in law and in family life. So a lot of, a lot of big questions. What were kind of the takeaways for you and, and uh, from this episode uh, with, with Wolfstan, the Archbishop of York, um, but perhaps also some of the other uh, medieval episodes where people kind of thought the end of the world might be coming um, for now, because I think a lot of your work has had to do with helping people see um, the medieval era not as, you know, these strange people with unenlightened views, um, but maybe getting into their heads a bit and, and perhaps even learning something from them. The thing that I really admire about Wollstone's sermon is that he, it's not kind of hopeless. It's not despairing. It's not um, saying, well, the world is, is ending and, you know, we've all sinned and we've all learned this. That's it. We deserve it. Let's just all, you know, the world go up in flames. And, um, and that's how it ought to be. He's kind of still thinking about things that you can do, even if you feel like the apocalypse is only a couple of decades away. Um, it's like there are still things that matter and still things that are worth doing even though they don't stave off the apocalypse, they aren't going to kind of keep the darkness away, but they are sort of still valuable and worthwhile and still important um, because they're right in themselves as he sees it, these, you know, the um, observing these duties to God and to other people, it's the right thing to do. And also it can kind of do some good in the meantime, because if you want to reconstruct a society, even in, with the sense that maybe it's not going to last very long, maybe the apocalypse is still not very far away, that doesn't mean it doesn't matter what you do in the meantime. Ultimately, the, the the motivation for, or a way of looking at the motivation for doing good, even if the world is about to end, is the good you do won't be lost, and there is another world that will be, you know, the end of the world is not the end in, Christ, in the Christian view. And it's just interesting to sort of realize the way that that kind of, you know, firm belief in there being a new heavens and the new earth actually, in a way, allow you to live well in this earth, because even if it's true that the apocalypse is about to happen, you can still act as though you're building for the long term because you know that what you build won't be lost. And that maybe, in fact, you work harder for the present world because you feel like you you don't give in to despair and hopelessness and you don't just say, well, nothing matters. You know, they they still feel like the, the, the world matters very much because the things that you do here might affect eternity, might echo in eternity. Yeah. 